Sometimes people roll up in my comment section asking me about my qualifications. Well, here's one of them. I've done a lot of drugs. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health as well as addiction, addiction recovery and all of that. And what I try to do is pull different topics from YouTube or pop culture to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, this is my next review of the U. Uh, Netflix series, um, season one, just found out they're doing season two, pretty cool. But anyways, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, at The Rewired Soul. The only reason I even knew to check this show out was because of all of you beautiful people who tweeted at me and DM'd me and left comments and tell, told me to check this show out. So make sure that you follow me over there. So yeah, anyways, in this video, um, what I like to do is, I, I like to see how shows are depicting mental illness or how shows or are depicting like, drug use or recovery and see if it's realistic, you know, because I think it's important that we look at it and, you know, this way, if you can relate or you know somebody who is using or maybe if you're somebody who's using and you need help, you know, we need to see what's real and what's not real, all right? So in this video specifically, we're gonna be breaking down a few characters and their drug use and that's Benji, Peach, and Claudia, all right? So if you haven't watched the show yet, just so you know, there's gonna be some spoilers some minor spoilers, all right? But anyways, if you haven't watched the show and you wanna watch it, turn this video off, come back later. But if you don't really care and you're just here to have a good time and learn about drugs, <laughs> that sounded weird, um, you can stay tuned, all right? So first, let's talk about Benji. So Benji is the jerk that Beck was dating in the beginning, right? And he he's super rich guy and whatever, and we knew that he used drugs. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever, I don't mind stere stereotyping drugs drug use. Typically, a rich dude like Benji, I would assume, I would assume that a guy like that was doing cocaine, all right? But later on, we find out that he was actually using heroin. So when he was locked in the box by Joe, um, he was going through withdrawal, all right? And one thing that I think is really important that a lot of people need to understand is that, you know, Benji snorted it, okay? That's one of the reasons I thought it was cocaine, but he snorted heroin, okay? It's important that people realize this because sometimes, you know, people ask like, what are the signs of like drug use or opioid use or whatever? And you guys, like snorting is an option for heroin. I'm not telling you to go snort heroin, please don't. <laughs> um, um, but like, say, say it's a parent or whatever. See, a lot of people get the misconception that heroin is only used by injecting it, right? But that's not true. It can be injected, snorted, or smoked, okay? So some of the signs that you're looking for might not be track marks on a person's arms, and even track marks are hard, uh, a hard sign um, to look for sometimes because people who are hiding their drug use, they inject in other places besides their arms. Some people do it, you know, in their neck or between their toes or whatever. I knew a guy who injected meth in his eye thing right there in his tear duct all right so yeah usually people doing drugs don't want to get caught doing drugs so it's important to know that this can be snorted as well if you're looking for signs of addiction um there's other things to look for like you know sniffing residue around the nose sometimes red bloody noses things like that for example my substance of choice was prescription opioids and i snorted them all right, so like I wasn't just taking them, I would typically crush them up, snort them. So this was one of the reasons that maybe some people didn't know, um, but yeah, that's what I was doing. So in the scene where um, uh, Joe gave Benji some drugs to get information about Beck, I think it's important to realize this. So since Benji was going through withdrawal and fiending really, really bad, Beck knew that he can get information from Benji and Benji was more than happy to do it. So what I want you to take from that scene right there is if you have a loved one who needs help, this is the time to do it, okay? Because that is very realistic. When someone is coming down and withdrawing from drugs, that is the perfect time to get them into treatment. They are desperate, they will do just about anything. For example, that's when I got help, okay? I was out of drugs, my mom threw, found found my drugs, threw them away, and I was willing to do whatever it took because, you know, the withdrawal, especially from opioids, is extremely painful. I'm gonna talk about some more symptoms of withdrawal soon, but opioids in particular have both physical as well as psychological withdrawal symptoms. So when someone's coming down, even if it's like alcohol, all right, like, 
One tip that I'll give you is don't try to get somebody help while they're high or while they're drunk. 99% of the time, it's not gonna be good, okay? Best time to do it is when they are coming down, when they are withdrawing. That's when you say, hey, let's go to treatment, all right? And something that I think is important to realize is that medical detox is always the safest, best option. Worst case scenario, you go to an emergency room if you don't have insurance and can't get into a detox facility or if like detox facilities have too long of a wait. So next, let's talk about our girl Peach, all right? So Peach, she, um, you know, I made a video about Peach yesterday. Peach, you know, she, she um, faked that she was uh, attempting suicide and she didn't really take anything uh, too deadly. So anyways, in that scene, when they go over there, uh, Beck tells Joe to go downstairs in the bathroom in the bathroom or whatever and find the naloxone, okay? And what naloxone is, this is um, something used for people who are overdosing on opioids, all right? So one of the reasons that people overdose on opioids is because the opioids go in and they, they um, occupy the opioid receptors in the brain. So if this is a receptor, this is the opioid, right? So when you snort the nasal spray, but they also have like injecting and all that stuff, what it does is it knocks the opioid out of the receptor and it revives people, all right? Now, depending on what the person used or how much they use, sometimes it takes a few doses, okay? So I've heard of people having to be revived from an opiate overdose with like three, four, or five um, squirts of naloxone, okay? But I think this is something really good that people need to understand. You really, 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 um, if you're in the United States, I don't know how it is in other countries, you really need to look what... Um, what's going on in your state when it comes to naloxone. It's also called Narcan, and see if you can buy it over the counter. If there's somebody in your life who is using and they're not getting help, it is always, always, always good to have some naloxone on hand, okay? Because you never know when this is gonna happen and it can really save somebody's lives. Because what happens when somebody goes through an opioid overdose is that they, they can't breathe, they might choke on their own vomit, you know, all that kind of stuff. So naloxone might save their life because you don't know how long it's gonna take for paramedics to get there. But for example, here in Las Vegas, a few things, they legalized um, selling naloxone over the counter. So you can actually buy it over the counter. But the other thing is too, that there are different organizations. Like for example, we have organizations here in Las Vegas that do free Narcan training. That's a good thing, by the way. And typically those organizations, they might give you free naloxone. So there are some places here in Las Vegas where um, like I actually have some naloxone just in case, because I work in the uh, the field of addiction treatment and all that, but it's not the nasal spray because that's more expensive. It's actually uh, a syringe and it's like <clears throat> inject. All right, so look in your area, ask people, ask your pharmacist if you have to, like ask your local pharmacist, do you have naloxone, is it over the counter? Or you can just Google it and see if it's, um, if it's able to be bought over the counter in your area, especially if you're in an area where opioid addiction is a really, really big problem. So lastly, let's talk about Claudia, all right? So Claudia is Paco's mom. We know that she has a drug problem and all of that. And here's where I think it's important to understand what is being shown in shows and see what we can learn from it and see if it's realistic or not realistic. So they never really say what substance that uh, Claudia was using, but based on the scene where Claudia came over when um, Joe, Karen, and Paco were eating dinner, it seemed like Claudia was on an upper, like cocaine or meth, okay, when she came in there. So when Claudia is going through withdrawal and they bring her down to the little cage do dad thingy, all right? Um, one thing that Joe brings up is like naloxone, okay? So this is the thing. It's important to understand what naloxone is and how it can help. Naloxone is specifically for opioids, okay? It's not for cocaine, it's not for meth, all right? So it's important to understand that because we don't want, especially because naloxone is expensive, like you don't wanna run around spraying people with naloxone who are like addicted to meth or addicted to cocaine, and that's not how it rolls, all right? But anyways, Something I always say like is detoxing on your own is extremely unsafe. So that's one of the things like I think I mentioned in my last video about Peach, like trying to detox her downstairs, not good. But what I will say is 
under the assumption, under the assumption, I don't know if they say exactly what drug it is in the book, under the assumption that Claudia was using uppers like uh, cocaine or meth or whatever, Adderall is also an upper or any of those am amphetamine medications, the symptoms of withdrawal that she was going through aren't too dangerous. So I get a lot of pushback when I say how dangerous withdrawal is and you can die from it. Well, like, yeah, you can die from withdrawal from um, cocaine or meth, but it's not because of the drug, okay? Long-term cocaine or meth use, what it does is it puts your heart under a lot of stress, okay? Anytime you are going through withdrawal, your heart is under even more stress and it elevates your blood pressure and your heart rate. So yes, you can have cardiac failure no matter what you're withdrawing from. That's why it's important to go see a medical professional, all right? But anyways, during the scene where she's withdrawing, she was like throwing up and all that kind of stuff. If it was a substance like cocaine or meth, that wouldn't happen, all right? Um, typically, or it might happen, but very rarely, typically um, symptoms of withdrawal from uppers like cocaine and meth, they're going to be primarily psychological. There aren't too many physical symptoms of withdrawal, okay? So typically somebody who is abusing meth or cocaine or whatever, they're going to have restlessness, irritability, insomnia, depression, anxiety, a lot of psychological things. But looking at a drug like heroin or prescription opiates or whatever, you're gonna have a lot of physical symptoms. So I personally went through opioid withdrawal. I did a cold turkey withdrawal, not by choice, all right? But I had both physical as well as psychological symptoms. But if you are somebody or know somebody who is struggling with uh, opioid use, just know by going to a, a qualified detox facility, there are medications that can help with withdrawal. I don't typically recommend methadone um, unless it's a very quick taper, but even still, I don't like it. It can be more addictive and you can become more dependent than with opioids. Typically, what I always recommend is a short-term Suboxone taper, all right? So Suboxone is, it's a partial very partial opioid but what it what it does is it helps trick the brain by you know those receptors i was talking about it occupies those opioid receptors so it tricks your brain into thinking that you are still using the drug all right so that way it decreases your symptoms of withdrawal and then when you're under you know the care of medical professionals some people do um outpatient uh detox you get tapered down so it helps a little uh it helps a lot with the withdrawal because people who try to withdraw cold turkey they have a higher chance of relapse because it sucks all right but anyways uh, i i always recommend like maybe one to two weeks max for a suboxone taper because if you do a suboxone taper or just a suboxone detox and you do it long term months i've seen people being on it for years you will go through withdrawal all over again because suboxone is a partial opioid so that's why usually one to two weeks is your best option all right but anyways anyways like i said um no, i was joking earlier like aside from my qualification of doing a lot of drugs back in my day um i also work uh, in addiction treatment, all right? So the addiction treatment facility um, I was recently working at for over three years, you know, we had an inpatient facility with detox and all of that, as well as nursing and doctors and everything, and we also had outpatient. So if you have any questions about um, drugs, detox, anything like that, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But again, like I said, there will be many more videos coming up about the show you, breaking things down, because I know a lot of you loved it. And if you have any recommendations on things that you would like me to talk about from the show, let me know down in the comments, all right? Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Don't forget to uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at The Rewired Soul. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, because I'm making a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You you are all amazing and if you would like to get exclusive content get involved in the patreon q a and all sorts of cool stuff click or tap on that patreon icon right there all right thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time